Welcome to Reflections, a show that seeks to examine if others see God in your reflection and how Scripture relates to us in this day and age. Peace and all God's blessings be with you. I am Father Bob Janine, the pastor of Mission St. Sergius and Bacchus, an all-inclusive, welcoming, affirming, independent, old Catholic faith community of the Reformed Catholic Church. I am also the Servant General of the Order Franciscans of Mercy. And today we are going to be discussing the readings for Sunday, October 15th. I've entitled my show, Do You Reflect God in Your Daily Life? Our show, and the logo for our show over my shoulder here, is Reflections. And it comes from when I first started 15 years ago, I started thinking I'd write a book. I still haven't gotten the book written. But I thought of a name for the book, a title, Reflections. Can people see God in your reflection and how scripture relates to you today? And that's what we're going to be discussing today. The gospel reading reminds us that many are called, but few are chosen. The king invited many people to his banquet, but they rejected his invitation. The king is God. The banquet is heaven. And the Eucharist. And, like in the gospel story, many people reject it. Many people are too busy. Our churches have been closing because we can't maintain them, because people aren't coming. We're not getting vocations. There's a shortage of priests and nuns and religious People don't have time to go to Mass or to church or synagogue. They're too busy. Oh, I've got to go shopping. There's a sale at Macy's. Oh, no, no, no. We have a basketball game we have to go to. Oh, there's a hockey game. Oh, the Patriots, Patriots are playing and I've got to get over to, you know, no. God has gone from being the focus of many people's lives to somewhere down there, we think about, oh, I'll bet you that hundreds of thousands of people were begging God to take care of them in the hurricanes. When we are in deep trouble, that's when we think to call upon God. The sad thing is, many times, if you are brought through that trouble, we forget to thank God. We shouldn't wait for something, a natural disaster or something, to, oh, I got to talk to God, I got to pray. We should be praying every day. We should be going to our church or synagogue or mosque and worshiping the God of Abraham, Isaac, David. We Christians should be going to church every Sunday or Saturday evening. The king invited many people to the banquet, but they rejected his invitation. He sent his servants out to bring them in. And they rejected. And then when they went out and grabbed and brought in all these people, off the streets. There was one person who the king wanted to know why they were not hired properly. A 
Are you attired properly? Oh, no, no, no. You don't have to be wearing fancy clothes. We're not talking about the clothes. We're talking about your heart. Your inner self. Are you acquired, attired in goodness? Do you give of yourself? Do you care for the environment? Do you care for people around you? How are you attired? When you look in your spiritual mirror, what do you see? Are you dressed clean and neat? Is the reflection cast back of you sharp and clear? Or do you see streaks and cloudy issues and dirty spots on the mirror that need to be cleaned? If you see spots and things, ask yourself, well, why are they there? What's causing these? Possibly you're not accepting yourself as a child of God. Maybe they're there because you spend too much time thinking about yourself and your needs, your selfish needs, rather than thinking about the needs of others and finding ways to help those who are in need, those less fortunate than you. One thing that can cause dirt and streaks on your reflection is the distance you put between yourself and God. And that's, that's, that's a major one. Because that's one that an awful lot of people have been guilty of in recent times. You know, when I was growing up, Sunday, you couldn't shop on Sunday. The stores were closed. Sunday, you went to the church of your family. If you were Catholic, you went to Mass. If you were Episcopal, you went to their Mass. Or if you were Jewish, on Friday evening you went to shul. You took time each and every week, set aside time to go and worship God. The God who created this earth, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Mohammed the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You took the time. Today, that's one of the last things that people do. You need to believe in God. You need to put your trust in God. You need to turn to God daily. You need to have God as the center, the, the capstone. You need that foundation. So, what do you do? Pray. Turn yourself around. Make sure you take time to worship God. Take time every day, morning and evening, to pray. Sometimes, and just sometimes, just possibly, when you look in the mirror, you don't recognize the person staring back at you. And you need to ask why. There are those times when you see something that's dark and foreboding, a scary figure that seems to be calling to you, that is strong, that's ready and ready to take you 
away. You know who I'm talking about. He's real. He exists. And he uses every guile that he has, every weapon in his arsenal to turn you away from God. Baiting you. Hanging the, the gold and the lavishness of life, promising you all this wonder and glory just so he can take you away. Entice you to turn away from God and live. Live only for the moment. Live for today, never mind tomorrow or the future or eternal life. Have fun, enjoy yourself. Fill yourselves with debauchery. Ah, but then there are other images that you might see in that mirror. Beautiful, luminescent images that seem to glow from within. And that's the reflection of God. The Holy Spirit, the guard, your guardian angel, whispering you, whispering, come, follow the path of righteousness. Go ahead. Take a good look in your spiritual mirror. Do you reflect the infinite mercy and love of our Lord Jesus Christ? Do you live your life in a way that would prompt God to say to you, when your days here on earth are open, over, welcome my good and faithful servant. Well done my good and faithful servant. What you see in the mirror is what others may see and how others will react to you. If you live your life always striving to be kind and generous and considerate and thoughtful, forgiving, not discriminating, not bullying, being nice, to even those people you disagree with. Rather than engaging in battle and vicious, nasty language with them, extend love to them. If you do that, the image that people see in your reflection is going to be the image of God. And that's what we're called to do. To try to emulate how Jesus Christ lived, how the saints lived. You know, anyone who discriminates over anything, discriminates because of race, nationality, sexual orientation, gender identity. Anyone who does those things discriminates because somebody was divorced or denounces somebody because they happen to have a child out of wedlock and they go and punish that child. Oh, is that a sin? A child is an innocent child of God and needs to be respected and treated as such. As every single person on the face of the earth needs to be respected because everyone is a child of God. If you discriminate, if you bully, there's going to be stains on your mirror and you're going to have to get the Windex of forgiveness to wipe them away. 
You know, Jesus Christ welcomed and embraced everyone who came to him. He called and welcomed everybody. And told everyone that they, because of your faith, you have been saved. That's what we need to have, faith. Faith in God. Trust in God. Live our lives in a God-like way. Being kind and nice and personable and charming and welcoming to everybody. Yeah, I know, it's not easy. People who know me will tell you, I have a temper. I'm constantly fighting, trying to restrain myself. Remember that I am called to love, to be kind, to be charitable. Christ went through what he went through for one purpose and one purpose only to allow us to have A, the forgiveness of our sins, and B, everlasting life. He died and rose so that he could open up the gates of heaven for everybody. He lived his life as a human being in order to show us how we should be living our lives. He gave us the example. His followers, his apostles gave us the example. St. Francis, St. Clair, St. Joan, St. Maximilian Kolbe, St. Damien and Molokai, all of them gave us examples on how we should live our lives. God has even given us the strength, the vitamin, to be able to do it. He gave us the Holy Spirit, who gives us with wisdom, understanding, knowledge, counsel, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord. If we seek them, they are there for us to have. If we seek them, God will bestow them upon us. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. That's what we're called to do. I'm going to close this reflection with a prayer that I say at least twice a day. And I wrote it when I was on a retreat back actually 11 years ago. It's a prayer for God's infinite mercy and love. Almighty, merciful, loving God, Open my mind, my heart, and my soul to your infinite love. Instill within me the knowledge of your truth. Guide me in your ways in all things that I do, so that I may be unto others a reflection of your love towards them. Allow the light of your truth to flow through me to them, in order that they may come to know you better. I pray that all those with whom I come in contact with each and every day may be brought into a closer union with you and enjoy the promise of your salvation earned through your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in his passion, death, resurrection, and ascension. I humbly ask this in the name of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
Until we meet again, I am Father Bob Janine, and I invite you, please, visit our websites, www.orderfranciscansofmercy.org and www.missionstsergius.org. There you will find out about our ministry, our Franciscan community, and if you go to the syllabus tab on our Franciscan site, you'll see what is involved in trying to in becoming a member of our Franciscan community. You will also find a, an oval or a button that says donation. Put your cursor on it, click on it, and it'll take you to PayPal where you can safely and securely make a donation that helps us to do the work we do. In the nursing homes, the independent living facilities, and the shut-in, among the shut-ins, and even this TV show. So, check us out. And until we meet again, may God bless you and keep you. May he let his light shine upon you and fill you with his infinite mercy and love. Pace bene. God bless you. This program was made possible by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks, just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.